their welds are much more consistent than they used to be compared to the turbo kit i should say is 100 percent done what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel so the last episode you guys saw we got our intake manifold we got our intercooler we got everything buttoned up well starting to i should say and um you also saw that it started cutting up the hot side so as you can see hot side has been mangled up and uh, right now we're just kind of trying to float the turbo to see where we're going to be able to put it um we know we're going to be going to a bigger turbo eventually so right now we're just trying to make make do with with, with what we got and uh just get it done get it fired up get it running that way we can always make um new revisions we can make more upgrades later on down the road all right guys start the day off with a little oil change on the cam vet and we're actually switching oils from Pennzoil 530 to Shell Rotel T6 5W40. So, as you guys know, or if you don't know, when we cam this thing, we used we reused the lifters in the LS2, and those lifters are kind of known for being noisy. Never made any noise before, but after the cam swap, I think there's just a little bit more wear, not really wear, but more load on them, so they are a little bit noisier. So I'm going to try a heavier weight oil. Um, oil pressures were fine. I think I had 35 to 36 PSI when it was at full running temp, which is pretty good. But we'll see what happens. We'll change it out and uh, we'll run it up for a little bit and uh, see if it quiets it down just a little bit. So I don't know if you guys know this, but on the C6 Corvette, there's actually a lube function where you can basically prime the motor after you do an oil change or if it's been sitting for a couple months probably because they expected people not to drive their cars i don't know why but either way it's kind of a cool function so i'll go ahead and show you how to do that if you didn't know how to do it already what you do clutch in full throttle right and you just hold it down and all it's going to do is prime the motor without actually firing it and you can stop it right clutch in fires right up All right, short side, we got it all mocked up. It's just sitting there right now. But as you can see, two more pie cuts on this little short radius bend here as it's just kind of floating. We will have good clearance. I mean, we'll have to just cut this tab off obviously, but we'll have two inches at least right there, which is good, which is really good. So I don't really foresee us going full lock that often in this thing, but you never know. So I always got a plan for the unexpected. Um, which we did not do, which my fault again, I know, sucks. But we're plugging away at it. So the short side's done, which is good. I've already cut up um, the original flange right here. So I'm probably going to make another cut uh, right before this weld. That way it'll be a nice, sh well, I should say it'll be a nicer, a straighter shot to this over here. Now I can still move this a little bit. Our double slit fitting, like I was mentioning in the last video, I don't know what happened to it. Either I welded it wrong, which is probably the case, or it's just a super, super tight tolerance fit. I called stainless headers, and they said that thing should be in and out like butter when it's not welded, and it was not. And I sent them a video of it, and they said it's fine, so I welded it, and it's not fine, so just... I don't even know what to do about that, but that's probably one of the main reasons why we'll just redo the entire hot side once we go to a uh, one of the big boy turbos.
All right, one side is all done. We got the short side all welded up. And as you can see, our welds are much more consistent than they used to be compared to the first ones like down here. So the pipe is still a little bit warm. But uh, yeah, so now we'll have to make this join. And once that's done, you guys can see, I got it bolted up just a little bit or two bolts in there. And we got clearance. It looks less than what it actually is. So we got plenty of room right there. And this is full lock. So we are good to go. So the nice thing is the compressor is going to go up. It's just going to go straight into the intake manifold. So, yep, just chugging along. We'll get this side done, and, uh, yeah, the hot side will be finished once again. All right, guys, we are back in the garage, and we got some new equipment, and I'm super excited to show you guys because this is something we should have done from the very beginning trying to do this hot side. So what we got here is the Swag Off-Road. This is just the base model, but it's the Porter Band stand, right? And... This is the Harbor Freight, the Bauer um, edition, or the Bauer brand, Portaban. Um, so yeah, I just got this the other day. I did a few test, test cuts, and this thing just cuts through stainless like it's nobody's business. And it is so easy and so convenient to have now, because now we can make super accurate cuts and very, you know, just it's going to be so much better and so much easier to try to finish up this hot side knowing that we have this and yeah i'm just super excited to get into it and get this thing finished that way we can move on from the hot side after having to redo it all right guys we got the prime weld all fired up and we got our new piece tacked up and there she is so we got good gaps good fitment on all the pieces which is uh, pretty nice so i'm pretty excited to weld this up what i'm going to do is actually tack it in the car um, I was going to just tack one side and probably weld the rest of it and then worry about one side, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. We'll see how it, uh, we'll see what I feel like doing. Um, yeah, so there it is. Not much different than the other one, but it is just a little bit. I think this bend is actually a little bit less of a radius, but either way, it's going to clear with the new uh, turbo spot and that would complete the hot side. All right, so you guys just saw us welding up the new portion of the hot side which is pretty cool so our oil feed will work our drain line i had to switch it to a straight fitting that way it didn't touch the uh um the exhaust right here so all the welds are done and i didn't really take my time as much as i should have but i mean like you guys can see these are more consistent with these now so i just used the little jazzy tan the little your cup so that's probably why there's a bunch of color in there so technically you're not supposed to have all the color but like i said we're probably just going to be redoing this entire hot side or at least from this slip joint forward or this way once we get to a uh, a big big dog turbo over here so yeah it's mounted which is really nice and it'll clear like i said it'll just go right above our fitting right here a hose and uh, i just went ahead and whipped up a little little exhaust little 45 a little slash cut um it's kind of a junk piece because it's all dented right here so i can't really get it that flat but uh yeah we're just looking for some cheap 11 gauge some real thick stuff um just because like i said we knew we were going to a bigger turbo eventually so we got a little piece we're not even going to run the hood i just kind of decided that that there's really there's really no point to run the hood because we're not going to cut up the hood for this turbo to make it fit we'll cut it up for a bigger turbo or a turbo we might have on the car for you know more than a year so when that time comes we will put a hood on it and we will have you know probably a full exhaust we'll probably put the exhaust out the fender or out of the hood we don't know yet because like i said you never know what's going to happen here in the future so we might do twin turbo might do a single 88 a single 92 something so we'll figure that out um but first things first we got to get the car running and get the car done so i just uh yeah that's why that's there so We'll have to put an O2 bung in there, not a big deal. And obviously we need to complete the cold side. So once we do the cold side, put the blow off valve on, our turbo kit will be complete, 100%. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the wastegates on, make sure everything still fits pretty good, should. There's no reason why it shouldn't, but you never know. So put that stuff on, we can start doing boost control stuff, um, intake manifold stuff, so we can get everything bolted down, finalized, you know, for the last time. And we'll be good to go. You know it's been productive when my garage looks like a freaking tornado came through it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. But 
it's exciting because it means we're working and we're working on the Camaro. So I just showed you guys the hot side, hot side's done, waste gates are back on, got some CO2 plumbing on. Uh, we got a temporary uh, exhaust right now for the back side of the turbo. So we'll have to cut out right here, which we plan on doing anyway, when we run the full exhaust, when we get a bigger turbo. And um, yeah, I've got the clamps on there for now. And uh, it's gonna be pretty, pretty easy, pretty easy uh, cold side. So I'll just cut up this piece just to see. Fitter in there, like that. And as you guys can see, we're right there. So we'll have to cut it off here somewhere or at the end, get this bead roll in here. And then we'll have to either put some beat, some, some welds on the end of this. That way the clamp has something to bite onto or bead rolled or something. We'll figure it out. But yeah, so cold sides next. Done, done, done. Got out here extra early this morning. Got the uh, got the cold side all knocked out. Got the blow off valve on, and we got it plumbed up. So the hot side, cold side turbo kit is 100% done. And here you go. So our nice, easy little cold side. I welded the blow off valve this morning with some disgusting welds. I mean, these are probably the worst aluminum welds I have ever done. And it's not like I can't weld aluminum. Like I've got some pretty decent welds on this car. So I don't know, maybe it's just VS racing stuff like this flange, but whatever. Maybe it's a sign don't buy cheap stuff like we did. But either way, it's all done. We got our O2 bung in for our temporary exhaust and our temporary turbo with our temporary cold side. <laughs> kind of hard to say that, but you know, we, we are going to upgrade in the future, so once we do get a bigger turbo, I'm sure we'll have to redo probably all of this, which is not really a big deal because for the amount of stuff that we've learned doing it this time, I know for a fact we can make it 20 times better next time compared to this time. So I'm really excited for that rendition when we get down to there. Obviously, this car has got to be running first. But that is it, you guys. We got the wastegates plumbed up with our uh, Earl's fire shield for the... Uh, the push lock line, this stuff's pretty cool. I actually learned this from Devin Vanderhoff. If you don't know him, go out and check his videos out. It definitely helps out with the wiring process. That's where I've been getting a lot of my info from for that. So we got our uh, dome pressure stuff. So the top of the gates, this will be our from boost control. And then this is our reference line from the turbo. And then obviously blow off valve. We have a reference line on the back of the intake manifold. Right next to, you can't really see it, but our temp sensor. Yeah, you definitely can't see it. There you go. And then the one to the left is for the blow-off valve. One to the right, the one in the middle, is for our Aeromotive boost reference. So we'll put some zip ties on that once we get there. But just kind of getting everything cut up and mocked up so far. So cold side, or a turbo kit, I should say, is 100% done. Fuel system done. Catch can done. I mean, we are we're literally, I think, actually, we're probably done. All we have to do up here is boost control. So our MAC valves, we have to mount them somewhere, start the wiring process on the front side of the car, plumb the brakes, which they're already done. All we got to do is do two connections, transmission, uh, drive shaft, trans cooler, easy stuff really at this point. It's not even hard stuff. All the hard stuff, in my opinion, is done, which is super exciting. So I'm very, I'm very pleased with how this came out. It did suck that we have to redo the hot side. But in doing so, it made our cold side much easier. So I am happy for that. So there's the hot side. And like you guys saw before, we had to just kind of move the turbo up. That way it clears the wheel. So now we have plenty of clearance. And what I'll probably do is we still have a mounting hole. And I'll just make some type of quick bracket to mount it down to the frame. That way it is supported. It won't be super rigid. I almost dropped my phone. But at least I'll have some support. So... Little few things that we got to button up here and there, but I mean, we're getting really close guys and it's very exciting that we're getting there. So let us know what you guys think down below. Go ahead and leave us a comment. How do you think the progress of the car is going? And how do you think the engine bay looks? I think it looks pretty good. We really wanted to have that clean look and I think we achieved that so far. So like always, you guys, thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for subscribing. We will see you in the next episode.